Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about routing, routing table. So first I prepare this diagram using Cisco Packet Tracer. And now in this diagram you see you notice we have uh, a number of uh, LANs, local area networks. I'm just using one house per local area network and I'm specifying a network address. For example, this LAN here, network address is 10.000 slash 8 this LAN here is uh, network address 12.0.0.0 uh, slash 8 uh, the serial interface or the serial link between RT1 and RT2 router I'm um, assigning 192.168.0.0 slash 24 the serial interface between RT1 to RT2 and the RT3 is 192.168.1.0 slash 24 the network address of this LAN here is 172.16.0.0 slash 16 and the network address of this segment here, this LAN is 172.31.0.0 slash 16. So you notice I am not using subnetting. I'm just using a classful uh, IP address. Basically, I'm considering this class A, class C, class B, and I'm choosing private range of IP addresses. Now, I, as you notice here, RT1, for example, has four interfaces which are enabled and used. The fast Ethernet 00, zero connects to switch 1, fast Ethernet 01 connects to switch 2. So if RT1 receives a packet to uh, switch 1 LAN, this LAN, 10.000, should, it should actually forward the packet through interface fast Ethernet 00. Also, if RT1 receives uh, a packet destined to LAN 12.0.0.0, it should forward the packet through the fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. Okay, so these are exit interface with respect to any received packet from another LAN. Uh, the same thing, if host1 wants to send packets to web server, let's say, RT1 needs to forward the packet through the serial uh, 000 interface. And if host2 wants to uh, forward the packet to FTP server, RT1 needs to forward the packet through the serial 001 interface. Of course, host1 can talk to FTP server as well, so in that case, the packet will be forwarded through the serial 001 interface, and host2 can talk also to web server, which means any host can talk to any server, provided there is no uh, access list that, that uh, prevents such communication. Now, let me just go to route RT1 and have a look at the routing table. So first, I'm going to display the routing table, show IP route. Now, when you see the routing table like this, first thing you notice, I'm not using any subnetting. So, in routing table, you see the codes. The first thing you see, the code. The code indicate how this route, how the route was learned, how the route was received by the router through, which means basically, uh, C indicates that the route is belongs, actually it refers to a network which is directly connected. C stands for connected which means that this route relates to a uh, LAN or a network which is directly connected. And it's directly connected through, for example, let's take a look at this 10.0.0.0 slash 8. This LAN is directly connected through fast Ethernet 00. So if router RT1 wants to communicate with this LAN here, should simply forward the packet through the fast Ethernet 00. The same thing, if the router will receive a packet destined to 192.168 or uh, no sorry to 12.0.0.0 it should simply forward the packet through the fast ethernet 01 interface as you see here so the first column on the routing table contains characters and these characters will indicate how the route was learned or how the route can be reached also so in the case of directly connected route the router simply needs to uh, send the packet through the exit interface which is specified here and the same story with a serial link you see these are the serial links rt1 is directly connected to the serial link so you will see the same uh, thing uh, 192.168.0.0 is a directly connected uh, segment and if router receives a packet to this segment it should simply forward it through the serial 000 interface whereas if rt1 router receives a packet destined to network 192.168.1.0 it will simply forward it through the uh, serial 001 interface because these two segments are directly connected as you notice here serial 000 and serial 001 all right now 
we can see something else we have another uh, type we have other types of entries where the character is d d means that this is a route which was learned through advertisement initiated by a protocol which is eigrp you see here eigrp so it we configure the eigrp routing protocol here and in fact i use the eigrp 100 autonomy system and with this eigrp basically this routing protocol is going to uh, initiate or trigger exchange of uh, directly connected networks for each router so for example rt1 through eigrp it's going to advertise its directly connected networks to rt2 so rt2 will learn that these two networks exist and they are reachable through rt1 uh, same story with RT3. It's going to receive advertisement from RT1 initiated by the uh, EIGRP protocol. And it knows that in order to reach this network, it should simply forward the packet through the RT1 uh, router and exactly through the interface from where it learned about the existence of these networks, etc. So now, if we come back to the routing table, we found that we find that uh, RT1 knows about network 172.16.0.0. Why? because this network was uh, triggered, was actually advertised by routing tape, by the routing protocol EIGRP. Uh, from where, from where it learned about it? It learned about it from address 192.168.0.2, which is the IP address of the serial interface on RT2. So RT2, when it advertised this information about its uh, directly connected LAN 172.16.0.0, RT2 advertised this information to RT1 through serial 000 interface and uh, with an IP address 192.168.0.2. Now, what happens if RT1 receives a packet, for example, from host 1 or host 2, and this packet is meant to for the web server, RT1 is going to simply forward the packet to through the exit interface from where it received the information about this remote network. And uh, the next hop IP address from where it received this information is simply 192.168.0.2. This is the IP address of next hop router to reach this 172.16.0.0 LAN. However, the router is going to rely on the exit interface in order to forward the packet. So RT1 will simply send the packet through this exit interface and RT2 is going to receive this packet and then it's going to to forward it to the uh, destination. So we have also the same story here. We have uh, another route which was learned using EIGRP routing protocol. So the exchange is triggering is triggered by EIGRP. And as you notice here, EIGRP says that uh, RT1 knows that this was learned from this IP address, which is 192.168.1.2. This is the IP address from where it received it received the update. This is the IP address of serial 001 of RT1, RT3 router, sorry. And in order for RT1 to send packet to this destination network, it should simply forward the packet through the exit interface serial 0.0.1.1, which is this interface here, serial 001. So when you look at routing table, you have to be very uh, careful so the first thing, identify the destination networks which are there. Identify through which protocol, routing protocol, or how these routes have been learned. So the first thing you identify whether this route is uh, directly connected route. So basically it's a LAN which is directly connected to the router. At that moment you know the exit interface through which you will uh, send a packet to reach the destination. Uh, so this is a local network or this is a case of a remote network why because the knowledge about this network was learned through exchange initiated by routing protocol and in our case it was eigrp and of course via ip address ip address always is shows the uh, is actually the address of the next hop router from where this uh, information was uh, received now the serial interface is uh, indicates uh, the local interface of router RT1 through which the packet a packet needs to be forwarded in order to reach this destination address. Now you have a bracket. You have this bracket here. They contain two values. So the first value to the left and the second value to the right. 
Now the value to the left here, 90 for example, is called administrative distance. And what is the purpose of this administrative distance? Cisco routers, they can support more than one routing protocol. So now if you learn the same route from different routing protocol, so which route is going to be uh, inserted in the routing table? The route which is learned from routing protocol which has lowest administrative distance. For example, EIGRP has administrative distance equal to 90. OSPF administrative distance equal to 110, 110, and RIP routing protocol administrative distance is equal to 120. So assume that the same network was learned from the three using the three routing protocols, EIGRP, OSPF, and RIP routing protocols which entry, which information is going to be inserted in the routing uh, table. Definitely uh, the route which was learned from routing protocol which has the lowest administrative distance and in our case is EIGRP, of course default values because you can change them if you want. Now the second uh, part of this uh, between the brackets, the value to the right this value here indicates the metric. The metric basically uh, you can learn, especially it is useful when you have multiple paths between source and destination networks. Here we're talking about between the router and uh, destination network. Now, if you have multiple paths, with which path will be chosen? The path which will show the lowest or the smallest metric. So the smallest metric always win. So that's why uh, the metric is always good, is interesting when you have multiple routes to the same destination, of course using the same uh, routing protocol. Uh, however, if you have m multiple routing protocols running on the same router, uh, the information, w w the protocol which is going to find its routing table inserted in, its uh, information inserted in routing table will be the routing protocol which has the lowest administrative distance. So as you see now, things like I'm going to display and you notice this is the same uh, situation uh, that we have. These are the, this is the routing table. So just you have to spend some time understanding how to read your uh, routing table. And reading a routing table is uh, very important. Uh, it's a very uh, important thing. I hope this uh, demo was interesting, informative. Uh, see you next time. Th thank you.